In the previous lessons, we learned that bolts can be modeled as either solid bodies or as line bodies, but bolt preload can be defined in both the cases. In general, preload is applied by splitting a bolt into two parts and connecting them using constraint equations to create a state of tension. There are two ways of defining this. The first method is by using a bolt pretension object in ANSYS Mechanical and the second method is by using a translational joint. In case of bolt pretension object, the splitting of the bolt and creation of constraint equations is all done by mechanical behind the scenes. But when we use a translational joint, the bolt must be split manually in the geometry stage and then connected back using a translational joint. Since the bolt is split into two in both the cases, it's necessary to have at least two elements along the length. This can be achieved by using some mesh controls in ANSYS Mechanic. If the bolt is represented as a line body, one can use edge sizing to define either the number of divisions or the element size. In case of a solid body, we need to define a cutting plane that slices the bolt shank. It's not mandatory, but a hex combinated mesh is recommended when modeling the bolt as a solid body for better accuracy. This can be achieved by using a multi-zone mesh method along with body sizing to ensure a uniform mesh. Now, let's discuss the two methods of defining bolt preload in detail. Starting with the first method, which is using the bolt pretension object. This is the most common way of defining bolt preload since this method requires very little pre-processing. Bolt pretension object can be scoped to solid bodies, line bodies, and even beam connections. In case of solid bodies, the bolt pretension object can be scoped to either a cylindrical surface or to a solid body. In certain cases, where we have non-standard bolts that may not have a cylindrical surface, we can scope the bolt pretension object to the solid body of the bolt. In case of pretension object, ANSYS Mechanical uses a coordinate system to define the cutting plane and the axis of the bolt. It's important to keep in mind that this cutting plane must not pass through a region where bonded contact is defined. If it does, then the bolt preload is applied incorrectly and may result in incorrect results or even run into convergence issues. By default, Mechanical slices the bolt close to the center of the bolt. If the center of the bolt lies in the threaded portion where bonded contact is defined, then the default cutting plane is not acceptable. In such cases, the local coordinate system can be defined manually to control where the bolt is cut. The local coordinate system should be defined such that the local principal plane defines the location where the bolt is cut and the local principal axis defines the bolt axis. The location of the cutting plane need not be exactly at the center, but it must be within the grip length of the bolt. Also, the local principal axis need not be collinear with the bolt axis, but it must be parallel to the bolt axis. Now, let's look at the details of the bolt pretension object. As discussed in the previous lesson, there are two important settings for bolt pretension, load and lock. With the load option, we directly specify the value of the tensile force developed in a bolt during its tightening, and this results in a relative motion of the two halves, which is called as the edge aspect. The second important option is lock, which maintains this previously calculated adjustment, allowing us to represent a tightened bolt being used in service. The lock option can be used in any step except the first step. In most simulations, we use the load option in the first step and lock option in the subsequent steps when the operational loads are being applied. If the bolt is not locked, and instead set to load when operational loads are applied, the bolt force will stay the same and neither increase nor decrease with the applied loads as it should. Another problem that we see when we don't lock the bolts is that the grip length of the bolt changes when operational loads are applied to maintain the preload. This implies that the bolts are getting tighter or looser while the machine is being loaded, which is not physical. Most of the engineering simulations use the load and lock options to model bolt preload. However, 
there are few other options that can be used to define bolt preload. There is an adjustment option in which bolt preload can be defined in terms of the adjustment. This value represents the distance by which the bolt grip length gets shortened while tightening a bolt. This option can be used in any step. Another option is called open. This option is used to disengage the bolt so that the bolt preload has no effect on the applied step and can be used to mimic the disassembly process. This option can be used in any step. The last available option is called increment. This option applies an increment to the existing adjustment, thereby changing both the bolt adjustment and the tension in the bolt. We may use this to simulate additional tightening or loosening of the bolts, which is accompanied by a change in the grip length in a physical case. This option can be used in any step other than the first step. All these additional options are only used in special cases. In most situations, we use the load and lock options are sufficient to mimic the assembly process and the application of the operational loads. Now, let's see how to define bolt pretension object for different representations of the bolt. When the bolt is modeled as a solid body, the bolt pretension can be scoped to either the surface of the shank or to the body of the bolt. Let's take this bolt as an example. We first right click on the graphics window, go to insert and add a bolt pretension object. The scoping method is by default set to geometry. So go ahead and click the surface of the shank and click apply. This will define a bolt pretension to this bolt. Next, you'll notice the bolt pretension table appears on the lower right corner of the window. This model has two steps defined, so we can see a two-step table over here. Go ahead and set the first step to load from the drop-down menu and the second step to lock. Enter the value of preload over here and that completes the definition of bolt pretension. Notice that we have neither defined a cutting plane nor the axis of the bolt. This is because ANSYS Mechanical detects a cylindrical surface and automatically defines the cutting plane and the axis of the bolt behind the screen. For this to work, the surface must be cylindrical. Sometimes, even if the surface is cylindrical, Mechanical may not recognize it as cylindrical. This can be due to various reasons, such as artifacts in the CAD file, or the surface may be split into two semi-cylindrical parts, or sometimes the design may include non-standard bolts that may not have a cylindrical surface. In all such cases, we can use body scoping. In case of body scoping, we follow a similar procedure of first adding a bolt retention object, then change the selection type of body and pick the bolt of interest and hit apply. Now you'll see that a new field for coordinate system appears and the selection defaults to the global coordinate system. In case of body scoping, the Z axis of the selected coordinate system represents the axis of the bolt and the XY plane represents the cutting plane. If the global coordinate system meets both the criteria, then you need not make any changes. But if it does not, then you may create a new Cartesian coordinate system that meets these criteria and pick that instead. Also, note that the Z axis should only be collinear with the axis of the bolt and it need not be coincident with it. So, if there are multiple bolts in the same plane, then one may use the same coordinate system for all the bolts. When the bolt is modeled as a line body, 
The procedure is still very similar to that of solid body. You first insert a bolt pretension object and select the bolt by using either the edge or body selection and hit apply. Once again, you'll find the bolt pretension table on the lower right corner where you can set the bolt pretension definition to load and lock for the first and second steps respectively and define a preload value. Since it's a line body, we need not define a coordinate system and ANSYS Mechanical will take care of defining the bolt axis and the cutting plane behind the screen. Sometimes, we may also define the bolt using the beam connections, in which case, there's neither a solid or a line body associated with it. In such cases, we can still define bolt retention to the beam connection object. As always, start by inserting a bolt retention object and change the scoping method to beam connection. All the beam connections defined in the model will be listed here, so pick the appropriate one. The rest of the setup is similar to that of a line body. But there's another simpler way of defining bolt pretension to a beam connection. Locate the beam connection under the connections, drag it and drop it over here and that will automatically create a bolt pretension object to the corresponding beam connection. The bolt pretension object is the most efficient way to define bolt pretension, but it has three limitations. One, it cannot handle large rotations. This is due to the fact that the direction of bolt preload remains unchanged throughout the simulation. So if the bolt undergoes large rotation, the direction of bolt preload does not rotate with the bolt because of which we get inaccurate results. Second, the bolt pretension object cannot transfer shear loads and should be used with caution while modeling shear joints. And finally, bolt pretension section cannot transfer movement when a line body is used to represent the bolt. If none of these limitations are applicable for the problem at hand, bolt pretension object is the most efficient way to define bolt preload. But if even one of these limitations is relevant to the analysis, then bolt pretension object cannot be used and a translational joint should be used for defining preload. As discussed earlier, we start with the geometry of the bolt split into two parts. Make sure that there are no contacts defined between them. This can be done by selecting both the bodies, right click and go to contact comment to selected bodies. If there are any contacts defined, they'll be highlighted and one can verify them and delete those that are not needed. In this case, there are no such contacts, so we're good to proceed. Next, right click on connections and insert a joint object. Change the connection type to body to body and change the joint type to translational. Notice that the legend shows that only the X degree of freedom is active for this joint, which implies that the two bodies can only move in X direction with respect to the reference coordinate system. Next, we'll need to pick the reference and mobile components. Pick the surface of the shank on the lower body as mobile. And the surface on the upper body as the reference. Note that it's important to pick the reference and mobile correctly as this would decide if a tensile or a compressive state is created in the bolt. This can be verified using the configure tool which is available under connections tab. A positive value of displacement must result in the two bodies moving towards each other to ensure a tensile state. 
If the two parts are moving away from each other for a positive displacement, then right click on the joint object and select Flip Reference Mobile. Now the two bodies are connected to each other using a translational joint. Next step is to define bolt preload for which we will use joint load. This can be defined by inserting a joint load object and selecting the appropriate joint from the drop down menu. Next, set the type to force and define the magnitude which is nothing but the preload in the bolt. We still need to lock the preload in second step. We can do this by setting lock at load step to 2. This will ensure that the joint remains locked for the consecutive steps. This concludes refining preload in a bolt using translational joint.